Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Australian report, but we will be looking at some of the US markets uh, as well. Um, for us here, we were looking at this as wave three here, an A and a B and a C as wave four here, and then working a bit of a odd count to the upside of, of one, oops, and two in here, and three and four, and we're counting uh, five waves up here to get a top up here. Um, so it's possible that we've got a top in play and we've got wave one sitting here now. Um, I need to get a wave two here, so I'll copy that. Um, so it is possible for a turn here and it's something that we need to uh, look at, but I don't really have strong confirmation. And what I mean by that is that I can count five waves down into this little section here as well. Um, but it's also possible to be an ABC correction as well. So we just need to be a little bit careful and we'll explore that and I'll show you where the difference is. Um, so at this stage, um, you know, normally in a in the bullish weekly cycle that I use, we look, you know, we're in a bullish market. We look for Thursday being the bear day and then Friday and Monday being um, the bullish day. So if Friday doesn't turn out to be bullish, then I know that I have a change in trend. Now, um, the S&P, um, the DJ and the NASDAQ, they're all closed um, pretty much flat, some to the negative side just and some to the positive side just. So they're not going to give us a really strong lead to the upside. So we may see that bullish weekly cycle um, not be bullish on the Friday and that would indicate to me a change in trend. So that's one thing I'd be looking out for. Um, yeah, um, but at the same time, we, you know, <clears throat> uh, Elliot is, is good is what, when we're confident in it. Um, what it does, it gives us the direction of the trend. Um, and, you know, this hasn't really, from this wave four here to wave five here, it hasn't finished off really well. I mean, all of this pattern here, when you look at it, it's kind of like sort of three waves in a way, isn't it? It's kind of also like this. Uh, three wave structure here as well. Um, so um, it could even be an, an ending diagonal triangle coming up into the fifth wave or something. So there's a few things. We, so we don't have enough sort of confidence and or I don't have enough confidence and uh, evidence to, to take the turn in. But at the same time, you know, we can look to trade what we see and um, the difference between an analyst and a trader is that a trader will take the, the next trade setup. Um, so that's really what we need to do. We have to put our trading hat on here. So if this low here is breached, then we need to be looking at going short from that stage, okay? Um, and if we're going to go long, then we want, um, basically we want the market up here somewhere. We want, this is group two here, so from 5.9 to 6,000 here, we've got our, this is, um, got our sub-levels in here. We've got group one, which is uh, 10, 20, and 30, one, two, three. And, you know, it always acts as a nice, you know, it's been resistance all the way through here. And it, it got a bit of support here, and you know, it's a strong support here. So it's a, it's a, it's a really important number. I mean, I find that one is the strongest n number in the market, then five, then eight, then the number three. So it is a, you know, it's a, it's a powerful little number and it, it's, it's very handy to understand it. There's lots of little elements to it. But um, so the second strongest number is five. So this 50 here, the midpoint here. So if that becomes a retested resistance here, then that should sort of start waving the flags of, you know, looking for a short trade here. Okay, so if that becomes a retested resistance, and um, then we've got group two here. So group two is is sixty five, just in there somewhere, uh, seventy two and, and and eighty. Right. So on the long trade here, if the sixty five becomes a tested support, that will be the catalyst to trade long at that stage. Okay, um, and then if you're going to trade long, uh, forget that as support, then you can add your next position on top of 72 once that becomes support, and then you can also add on top of 80 if that becomes support, well, because we'll be looking for a move that will take us through, um, you know, the profit taking won't come in until Tuesday morning in that case. 
Um, what I am afraid of, though, is that the market can come up and just spike up into the 65, you know, say 67 there or something, and then fade down through this way here. Okay, so be careful about what you do here in, in this uh, instance, but we'll, we'll look at that. Um, there's, there's a good case for um, the banks to be uh, long as well. Um, when we look at, um, let's go to CBA here to start with. So CBA, this is the same as Westpac as well, okay, and so on. So we, we, we can look at this as one and two here, and then one and two here, nice strong third wave here, a very deep sort of uh, fourth wave here. But this does count as, I don't worry about the little spikes that this market causes in terms of the wave count, but an A wave, an A and a B and a C for the B wave, and then five waves down to this point is wave one, and then two, and then three, and four, and five. Now, it, the third wave is a bit short here compared to the others, but it, it all does fit in, in here. I mean, we could count that a little bit different. I mean, you can't count this as a B wave here because it's got five waves in it. So um, it's possible that we've sort of finished here. So the long trade here, you could start building in on support on 77.50, but it's really the 78 here. That's why I've got that there, 78 um, as support. And this also is the same pattern for ANZ and uh, Westpac as well, the same scenario. So this, there is a strong case for the market to move up. Um, now, uh, just coming back into this market here, I'll just go into the... I'll just go into the tick charts and then we'll have a look at um, uh, some of the other markets around the place. So what we were looking for here, and I'm not really confident in this count as one and two and then five waves up for the third wave and A and a B and a C for the fourth, which is really quite huge compared to wave three here. Um, and then we're looking for a move up here. And this doesn't even have a nice five waves either. Um, but it was the best sort of fit, you know. So... Um, but this move down here, it's like, um, is it five waves coming down here, um, or is it is it corrective? And if that's if it is five waves down here, then we'll be looking for an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave here. Um, so I think it's best if we just go into the ten ticks here and just explore this a little bit further in in here. So as as a um, First of all, have a look at it as five waves down, which makes a little bit of sense. We've got, we've got the five waves here, uh, then we've got uh, um, an A and a B and a C here for wave two here. And then in this instance here, we've got a very clear, I'll just bring this out a little bit here. We've got wave one and wave two here. Just shake these little guys up a bit more. So wave two here and then wave one and two and three and four and five for the third wave, and A and a B and a C for the fourth wave, which comes back into the price territory of wave one here. Is it a big deal? It's something, you know, it's, it's just a little tick in a box that we've got to put on the pros and cons, you know. And then we have five waves down here for the wave three, and then wave four here, then one and two and three and four and five here. So it can be counted as five waves down here, okay? Um, so that it's not such a bad fit. So then that would leave us, this is from this high to this low here, this is the 15, 60% retracement level. Not that that's the end and be end of all. Um, you know, basically uh, when a move comes down here and then comes back up, the move back up basically mirrors all the strengths and the weaknesses of the move down here. So this first high here is this, but it's not only this, it's also this as well here. So the next resistance is this block here from these lows to these highs here. So that brings us into group two here of 65, 72 and 80. And of course, there's other important numbers in this skeleton of, of three levels here, but I won't go into that at the moment. But um, what we'd be looking for here would be an A wave, a B wave, and then looking for one and two and three and four and five to come up here. So I would imagine that this is what I was sort of saying is that, um, you know, if the 65 becomes support, then we can look to go to the upside of that point. 
um, but just get a small position on 65 and then get another one on 72 as a tested support and then again on 80 and then we'll just hold through until take some profit on Tuesday morning if that's going to be the case okay um, as as a as a um, as a move down here as an ABC correction then the way that it would work is if I can just move these guys here a little bit this would be the A and the B here the difference is here is that we would just include um, just move these out of the way here because you, you may have this count as well so um, we'd look at this as uh, all of this is wave one this is wave two here nice big retracement back up but it just doesn't quite fit on this level in this space here so we just why we need to be careful and then this would be wave you know basically a diminishing factor at the end here for the C you know like wave one has got the extension in it then this one is wave three is smaller but then wave five is smaller again leaving wave three not the smallest you know uh, impulse wave in that structure so really what it boils down to all of this here is it boils down to this structure here you know what is this here so um yeah that's where it sort of boils down to but so the way out of it as i just mentioned is that um we can expect this to come up here um up into because otherwise this can also be wave one here and back for wave two and so on so i don't think we should worry about the elliott count so much just in 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 here but look at the concept of 65 being the support um and yeah going from that point and you know if you're going to go long right right here so to speak on this high this is a corrective move here that's why i know that this is going to go up here but then the stop can come down here out of the way but the short trade setup will be um we'll put this up here and then the next short trade would be down here so what i mean by that is if 950 becomes the retested resistance you have to short at that stage which sort of brings us over to um the reason that i think that the market can go up further is because um, I'm just going to go straight to Amazon, actually. Um, because with Amazon, we were looking at this being the fourth wave down here. Because this is driving the NASDAQ, of course, um, and Google and yada, yada, yada. But, um, you know, so, uh, yeah. Um, so this was a pretty clear count for me. So I had nice, beautiful five waves up there, then a wave two coming back. And then we had a really nice five waves here on the tick chart that I talked about as well. Um, for an entry uh, and then the third wave is now pushed up into this space here this is a major trading level one and then we've got group one here which is uh, 100 200 and 300 going up here and um, in that this these are just I mean what I do here just to explain stuff is I take the top here and take the bottom of this wave four here and there's a few levels you can use uh, the first one is the the 100 really there so but what I do is I just drift over and I go to the closest largest number here which is the 100 then I look for group 2 below here and then the top of group 1 here so that will be 123 here so that would be my space in here and this is this is the 161 extension up here and then what I do here is I look for the group 2 here low at the 65 and then the top here at number three here so this would be my target this is where the corrections will play out here on the extension of the but the most important thing here is that this is wave one and two here and wave three here so wave four is in the process here and then there'll be wave five to the upside here so if i just cut through to the tick chart here and look at this here then we were looking at this as wave one because we had a beautiful five wave structure up up through here and then we had this beautiful abc pattern here with five waves in it coming back right onto the dot of 61.8 percent and then we had this other little five wave structure moving up here which was beautiful and then the a and the b and the c here for this one here so we looked at going where well, we talked about it in the video to go along here and it did take off quite quickly at this point but then you know looking at this to the upside here wave three four and then uh all the way up for wave five here so this is what i want to talk about with wave four here so um with wave five here and wave three here and then we're looking for wave four to pull back so this does appear that 
you know, it's dribbling down, but it doesn't look like it's, um, uh, you know, wants to go down. So what we can do here is we can move these these ones here down, down well, one onto this high, high here to the next one. But I think we could also bring it down to here. But the thing here is that if 1,100 becomes the support here, then you can trade long from that point. Okay. I mean, the wave four here too, just let's just not be forgetful here so from wave two low here to wave three top there the 38.2 percent retracement move this is down here so realistically we can look at this i mean this basically ties back into the s p 500 so this is a wave four low here and that's the 38.2 percent retracement so it can come lower here okay so um, but that doesn't bother me as a trader or an analyst at, at that point because what I will do is I will trade long if that 1,100 becomes support. I'll get my first position on there and then I'll look at um, uh, one here, uh, 10 and then 20 and 30 and I'll build trades in on those numbers as well because if 30 becomes support, then we can go up from that point. Now, this all ties in, of course, I'll just save that um, while I'm here, but this ties back into... The NASDAQ and the NASDAQ here, this is the count that I've always had for the NASDAQ, which is having wave four here, then one and two and three and four, five for one and back for two. And then um, all of the third wave going up here, it's acted a little bit differently than Amazon, but Amazon's just one part of it. So we're looking at a possible wave four here and then wave five to the upside. I know that I can have this as an alternative wave four over here, then that would give me five waves here and I'd have a top in play here. Um, but as I've mentioned before with this, we just need to see how this plays out here first before making our mind up there. So this brings us to the S&P 500 um, and also the European markets as well. So, um, and I'm gonna have a look at uh, the European markets, but not I'm just going to have a look at the FTSE because the FTSE's got a strong relationship with the Australian market. You know we're under the Commonwealth banner and all the rest of it, so there's obviously trade and money flows through there a bit easier. So um, with this here, this is the alternative count I've got for the. If I line the S and P 500 up with the Nasdaq, then this would be the count here. So I would have one, two, three, four, five for one and back for two. All of this, the third wave here for wave three looking for a fourth wave here and then a fifth wave up higher here and I'd be looking at uh, 2,650 here um, for that. But um, the count that we're using here at the moment just on the one hour chart is having a top in here already and this is what I want to talk about because <clears throat> we were lining the um, Australian market up a little bit with this as well. Um, but is this right? Um, this is the question and um, if so, um, then how do we go about it? Um, and if wrong, where where are we wrong with this here? So um, the first thing that sparks um, my sort of interest with, with this one here is that we're in group two here at the moment with this, with, with this here. Um, but this move down here, I just want to um, study that for a moment, okay? And the way I'm gonna study that to get some real clarity on it is come to the cash market. So this is a five minute chart and this is the top here and this is over two days. That was yesterday and this is today. Okay, so it opened, fell out of bed and it's recovering now. So really this here, if I can just go into it a little bit, um, you know, and we've got nothing else to do but to really sort of split hairs at the moment with all of this, okay? So we need to go into detail. It's not like we're in a nice solid trend and, you know, we're pumping in the contract, so to speak. But here we've got wave one and two and then five waves down for the third and fourth and fifth. So we have a very clear five waves here. Because we've got a clear five waves here, after some type of correction coming back 40 to 60%, uh, then we can look at the next five coming down. But this could quite easily be an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave coming down here, okay? Normally it's the A wave that comes down the fastest, and then the C wave is normally a bit slower coming down. So it still gives us the bear market um, situation as well. But what I can say here is that on, the, on this cash market, if the price moves up above these highs here, yeah, if it moves up above... Um, or let's just say 
2581 would do the trick, wouldn't it? So if we've seen a move at 2581 on the cash market, then we know that this will be an A and a B and a C wave, okay? But if this market drops from here, okay, um, then what we're going to have, we'll have to look at this as down for wave one, back for wave two, and then down for wave one of a smaller degree, and then back for wave two again, hitting the supply, the sellers back up in this space here. So we could say you can go along on the S&P if group two here, which group two, as you know, is 65, 72, and 80. So if 80 becomes the support here, um, we've had support at 72, so that's very promising to the upside, I have to say. Um, uh, um, yeah, we always look at eight as a profit-taking number, but I won't go into the skeleton of group two, but if the 80 becomes the support, then we go along from that point. The other point that I want to look at to the, so we know where um, <clears throat> uh, this is here. I'll get into more detail about that on the S and when we do the, when I do the American video. But the other one I wanted to look at was the FTSE because the FTSE here, um, I had a very clear wave. Let's go into this here. I had a very clear wave one and two and one and two and one and two and we nailed that entry into the third wave here not nicely and then the fourth wave gave me a bit of grief but as they do sometimes you know so um but the main point here is we can see that we've got this strong third wave here we've got this uh complicated fourth wave through here and then i just stayed with it this here but um yeah so we've got this situation i mean this i would like to put wave one over here on top of wave b here but this really appears to be five waves here so i have to stay with this sort of expanded i have to stay with my original five waves up here and then an a and a b and a c wave here is an expanded flat in wave two by the way mr pretcher um because they don't say that that occurs but i see it all the time um i don't know why that is but and, you know, Prechter was the one that brought in the X wave as well. It wasn't part of the original Elliott thing. Um, so sometimes I just see that as an excuse, but here we go. Um, this this structure up here, um, you know, it's quite clear that the third wave that we're waiting for has certainly come into play here. And that means that this structure from wave four here to wave five here is not finished yet. So we haven't seen green wave four. I haven't pulled this apart in here yet. I can see that we've got one and two and three in here and there'll be little four. So we're gonna have some sort of little correction in here and then probably up to here and then we'll see some sort of correction here and then a move up into this space here. So this has still got more to go before it finishes here. Okay, so if this is going to go to the upside, then it's quite possible the Australian market can also follow this as well. Um, I don't know what the actual uh, uh, market connection is as such. I know the FTSE trades 10 times more volume than the, uh, than the, uh, than the SPY, um, you know, and I know that it's all about the interest rates and so on, and, and the UK were discussing interest rates uh, um, as such as well, putting their interest rates up. Um, but in banks borrowing money, especially from the Australian point of view, it's the carry trade, isn't it? So uh, the yen Aussie is important. Um, and uh, so is the US um, yen as well at this stage, the yen in any form um, at this stage. So anyway, look, this has got further to go up for sure. Um, Amazon and Apple have got further to go upside, so they're going to drag the NASDAQ up, and then that will drag the S&P up. So the top that we've been talking about um, as such may not be in place. So I just want to, um, this is back on the ASX 200 on 10 ticks. So um, this would be wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, and then wave five coming up here. So you need to count five waves from here. So one and two, and there'll be three and four and five up here. So there's going to be a top here where we can put that that green line there because I can't draw on this side here. But if we've got this as five waves up here, then it's going to it's going to come back anyway. Do you know what I mean? So just bring that over onto that top. Allow that top to come in place, and then put that on top, and then you can go long from that point. 
All right, well, that's about the best I can do. Um, so I've got to leave it at that. Um, but yeah, if Friday closes strong, then just leave your orders in there because Monday will follow through as well. Um, and if Friday closes weak, well, then we've got a change in trend and we can start looking at short positions. But really, we'll start shorting when the 5,950 becomes the retested resistance. But the Australian banks are suggesting to the upside, so we need to um, stay with the trend. You know, we don't want to call a top in um, in trade in trading terms unless we've got enough evidence. Um, you know, that's with the Elliott other all markets most markets and also the trading levels of support and resistance as well for that those trade setup so we don't have a trade setup to go short yet so it's not there Alrighty, um i'll leave it at that cheers